Hello, welcome back, or if it's your first time here, welcome to the Delicious Alignment Podcast, high vibing conversations with me, your host, Rhonda Ryder. This podcast was previously focused on learning how to love your body and make peace with food. We will still have guests on this topic, only now we are opening up the episodes to all topics from a law of attraction and delicious alignment point of view. This change felt like the next logical step for me, and I'm super excited for what's next. It feels easy and it feels good, and that's what you always want when making new decisions and shifts in direction, right? Ease and flow. I suggest listening to all the previous interviews in this series during March Money and Abundance Month. If this topic interests you, there will be a total of five after next week. Next Thursday, I am happy to welcome back Gina Mallison to share her expertise on tapping into an abundant mindset. As for today, I have a wonderful new guest for you, Alexa O'Hara. You are going to absolutely love her. Alexa is a sales team manager in the tech industry and currently lives in New York City. I wanted to interview Alexa because I was so impressed with her enthusiasm and mastery regarding the topic of money and abundance. I knew right away that she is a master on the subject and would have so much to offer you. I was totally right. She is very accomplished in her field of sales and account management in the highly specialized tech industry and her story of how she transformed her relationship with money during one of her first jobs as a cocktail waitress is really fascinating to me and I hope it is to you too. A little extra trivia about Alexa is that she has a passion for heavy metal music, travel, fashion, and history. You'll want to listen to the end where I summarize Alexa's five questions to ask yourself that will transform your relationship with money in a very big way. Let's get started. Hello, Alexa. Hey, Rhonda. How are you? I'm good. Good. I'm so happy to finally meet you sort of Mm -hmm. in person. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Great. And I don't really know that much about you other than um, we're friends in in a group and we yeah. have been communicating that way. Yeah. I would, but I know that you are really like a badass um, oh, yeah. as far as sales and um, you're a sales manager, your law of attraction, you're into Abraham Hicks. Um, yeah. So I, I would love to hear anything that you want to talk about um, to help my listeners with abundance and money and creating whether it has to do with business or you have any money stories I know you just won or whatever yeah. uh, like I know you have a million stories because <laughs> yeah sure I uh no I'm happy to happy to share um sure so I'll just introduce myself I guess briefly so my name is Alexa um I am based in the New York City area I have been working in sales pretty much since I got out of college over, I would say like, no, I'll say I've been working in sales for 15 years because I want to talk about some of those experiences that happened when I was in university, which I think really helped my mindset. Um, I got into law of attraction and specifically Abraham Hicks probably in like 2018. And then in 2019, I began really applying those principles in my life. Um, I, we know each other for context. I know that Ron had mentioned for the listeners, right. That we are in the same group. We both, um, know someone named Gina who I met because I was, I had a sales job that she was actually in. Uh, And we started around the same time and became friends and she started her own coaching business where, you know, she was always doing NLP, but then she started to do this like really unique law of attraction, Abraham Hicks style, programming involving calibrations. And I know that Rhonda does a ton of awesome calibrations with people. So it's the same kind of work that Rhonda does. And then Rhonda knows Gina as well. Gina, so uh, Yeah. And like Gina Mallison, the creator yes. of the Mallison method. And yes. We're, we're, yes. we're in the same program with Gina and that's how we met. Yeah, exactly. So it's super funny how like you meet all these cool, like-minded people 
like when you're vibing in the same way. Um, and I met Gina and I went to, and I'm on the East coast now where I'm from, but I actually initially started doing those calibrations in person with her when she was starting her business. And my life and my career really, really transformed around that time. And I went from, like, I always had success, but I, oh, I went from feeling, I think like I was not in control in a way. And a lot of like law of attraction is about like letting go of control, like letting go and letting go of the outcome. But I felt like everyone else's energy and everyone else and the whole like external, like everything was always kind of responsible for what was going on. Not me basically. Um, yeah. So I got really into that, that really changed everything. And I was able to really advance in my career and shift my mindset. And Um, I would say my first sales job actually was being a cocktail waitress when I was like 18. Um, and I never, like people won't think of that traditionally as a sales job. I viewed it as a sales job. I loved that job so much and everything I learned, I think about selling and almost like, I want to say an abundance mindset before law of attraction was because of that role. Um, I did not grow up in in an environment where there was an abundance mindset. My family did not have a lot of money. Um, There was always talk about like, there's never enough money. Like we're broke, like that sort of stuff. And Mm -hmm. that's really ingrained on you, right? As Mm -hmm. a kid. Mm -hmm. And then that job was super transformational for me because I realized that I could literally like own my own outcome and have a lot of fun doing it. And so as a cocktail waitress, one thing that I realized is that money was always flowing. Money is always coming. And it's actually very, um, like it's literal. It's like a literal thing. Normally you think of money always coming. It's like this vibrational thing, but it's literal. The door is opening. People are coming in and money is always coming in. And it's up to you to, to make of it what you will. Right. Cause if you think like, oh man, this sucks, this job sucks, this is hard. like, you're not going to make as much, but I always made a lot and it's always in a way infinite. And if there's always a surprise, like you don't know what money people have, you like you're open to money coming from all angles. And I love that feeling of having money. And it was very also to like the physical idea of P- or the physical manifestation of people coming through the door with money. You always had cold, hard cash after. So it was very cool to, to have this money that was coming in and this money that was flowing And it was actually really fun because it's like, if you get it, it's like you can spend it and then more is coming. And Mm -hmm. if you're not into law of attraction, right? It's always like, oh my gosh, save that money, put that behind lock and keep That's not how it works, right? It's the making room for more to come and more is always coming. And so that was something that I learned doing that job. I didn't have that before in my life. And so that was super transformational And really what I loved about it was that it all came down to me and my own energy and what I chose to see, right? It's Mm -hmm. perspective. If you choose, um, if you choose to view things as being difficult, they will be challenging. If you choose to view things as being abundant, literally money is coming through the door every Mm -hmm. day. I love it. Yeah. Super awesome. And then I had other jobs after that, but always ended up in sales roles where I was selling all sorts of random products, anything ranging from like office spaces, which was actually kind of fun to, um, to athletic clothing, just everything. And then Mm -hmm. I moved out to Seattle in 2015 because I really wanted to get into tech sales. Like that was Mm -hmm. super interesting to me. Um, I really wanted to get into specifically account management because I had so much fun um, selling accounts and then nurturing them and then getting them to buy more, but also helping them along the way. And I just love that. Mm -hmm. So that was something I got into. That's actually where I met Gina, right? Mm -hmm. At that job. And Oh, okay. So you were both working there. Yes. And also I think something really funny to know, because like we talk about the idea, like if you're in a law of attraction, and you're into Abraham Hicks, there's this idea of source and, and things just lining up. I, when I moved out to Seattle, I had no job and I made a list of like these companies to apply to. And I went down the order like alphabetically because that's what I was like 25 or whatever. And I'm like, Oh, I'm just going to go in alphabetical order. What a smart idea. So I applied in alphabetical order and I got offers, but the first offer that came in was the first one with the letter a. And so that was where I met Gina. 
And I just felt really right to go with the first one that had the, the first letter A. Cause I was like, oh, isn't that easy that it's like A. Mm-hmm. And I, literally there's like A to Z in Seattle and like tech companies, right? So I was like, I'm going to just go with the, the A cause that's the path of least resistance. Mm-hmm. And I ended up getting like an offer in the interview. Um, and it was just really fun. And then two, like a week later or so, or two weeks later, Gina started at the same job. And that is how um, we met basically. Um, and so that was fine. That was a really like a lot was going on in my, in my personal life at the time, but I always had that job and I felt like I was good at it and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Um, but I just kind of kept doing that. I took a break from that to start a PhD program because I had always been interested in that. And then I was good at that, but I actually hated it because I wasn't in an environment I liked, like I wasn't really making my own success. I was kind of just like stuck and super bored working at a university. Um, and also too, I found that there was not an abundance mindset there. So people don't make a lot of money, but also too, there's a, there's, I think like a culture of, um, at least I found people talking about like not having, or like Mm -hmm. almost like, at least in the program I was in, I was in a history program. There was a lot of like um, this almost celebration of not having where it's like, oh yeah, that's like, you know, the so, man. So wait a minute, you left a sales job and yeah. went to, um, a, to get a program to get your PhD yeah. in history. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah. It's really <laughs> random. I wanted, yeah, I wanted to do that. And so it was, I like chasing things, right. If an opportunity comes up and it's something I've wanted to do, I will do it because why not? Even Mm -hmm. if it fails miserably, there's never a fail miserably. There's always something that comes out of it. Um, And it wasn't the right time. I will do that PhD one day, but not now. Um, But it was weird because like you are around a lot of people, at least in that environment where it's like, um, I found a lot of folks were like, oh yeah, I'm going to do like a Marxist analysis of history or something. And it's all focused on like money being bad. And that sounds quite horrible mm-hmm. like generalization, but I was like, that's not true. Like money's not bad. Having money is good and anybody can have money. And I believe I can have money. And I felt like in that environment, actually money was a dirty word or like talking mm-hmm. about like wanting a better job outside of what was available for, um, liberal arts PhDs actually was frowned upon. Um, cause it's like money is bad. And that was actually something that bothered me. And I brought that up to, administration. And I was like, you know, this is actually not vibrationally for me. Mm-hmm. If I, if like, we're, you know, I'm thinking about it like this. And I was like, I don't know about that. So I left that program. And once again, everything fell immediately into place. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to go back to Seattle. Cause I had moved back to the East coast to do this program. I basically reached out to a friend that I knew from that other job. And I'm like, Hey, I need to get another job, like blah, blah, blah interviewed, got the offer immediately, like literally interviewed the day after I got to Seattle, um, was sleeping on a couch at the time, didn't have a place to stay. Just, I knew it would work out. I had like no money with me, but I knew, I think I had like $2,000. And if you're, I mean, that's for some people, that's no money for some people. It's a lot of money, but when you're moving across the country again, starting it up, like getting an apartment, that's not a lot of money. Okay. So I did not have a lot of money and I was like, damn, like I'm going to make a lot of money though. Mm -hmm. So I had that job. I, again, like vibrationally, it wasn't for me, but around that time, um, it's actually funny like that. And I feel like I'm talking really quickly, but when I get excited, I talk really quickly. No, Um, I I love it. It's really great. And I, and, and I love that you started out saying that the calibrations, once you started getting calibrations from Gina, that, that, that totally took you to the, uh, a whole nother level. So I, 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 I'm, I'm into it. I I love the story. Yeah. And if anybody listening has not had a calibration, get a calibration, get a calibration, like you're going to pay for a calibration you will reap the benefits so like a gajillion times after, right? Like what I paid for that. And I like to say like, for me, it was exciting. And at first I felt nervous to buy that coaching package because it's like, oh, this is money. But that's a wobble that I had. And I realized more money is coming. I'm investing in myself. Who better to invest in than me, you know? So I did that and holy crap, my 
like everything changed through that coaching. And this was around April. No, it was around like February or March of 2019. And my life started to, no, it was March, March to April. My life immediately started to change. It was simple mindset tweaks. So I Mm -hmm. went from being in a company that I don't think was doing super well at the time. Um, It was really hard to sell to like literally just like having these tools where I'd be like, I have to get on the phone and I have to sell X, Y, Z to a customer that really doesn't need it, which (laughs) whatever. And then I'd be like, all right, I'm going to calibrate myself at my desk. There's all this negativity. And then I just get on the phone and it would be like, boom, 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 boom. And people are like, holy shit, Alexa, what just happened? And it's like, my mindset happened. It's like, well, I know it's going to, I'm going to win. I know I'm going to land. And I know that money will always be coming. And so that was super transformative. And I remember distinctly that experience, like anchoring that, like when you're, when you start getting calibrated, when you start thinking about like this, these positive thoughts, you can either choose a positive thought or you can choose a negative thought. And when I would think, oh, maybe this is hard and have that wobble. I had this thing where it's like, all right, that like, I I sold like five products to one customer when like you weren't supposed, like when it was so hard to sell one to this type Mm. of customer. And -hmm. then there was a contest um, where you'd win $500 if you sold five products. And I sold five products to five different customers. Right. So it's like, and is this over the phone? Yeah, this is over the phone. And it was just, looking back on that, like that was that initial experience after being calibrated. And then I was like, well, damn, now I have that in my, my bank, like my, my bank of, of good vibes. Mm -hmm. And so then you have this confidence where you're like, well, I calibrated myself and that occurred. So I'm going to just apply that feeling. And like, even if there's a conversation that other people might think is going to be difficult, it'll be fine because I have this feeling that I can immediately pull from. Mm -hmm. Um, And around that time too, just like, I mean, this energy at that office was super toxic. Right. And so I began to have this anxiety about applying for other jobs and even going on LinkedIn was something that, and this is actually, I haven't thought about this in a very long time because I don't live in this wobble world, which is something that like, if you get calibrated in your, you know, you practice law of attract, like it really, like these things aren't, you know, when you're in that world of like, anxiety and fear and what's happening. It's like, you don't feel that same way. And so even thinking about it seems almost unnatural sometimes, but I look back to that time and I couldn't even looked at jobs on LinkedIn because I'm like, Oh, they would never hire me. What's the point. Right. And then going through calibrations and just like working on that, it was so easy, right? The work, like it wasn't work. It was like fun to dismantle this like junk right? This like this literal job. Mm-hmm. So you're the- saying you were, you were self-calibrating as well as getting yeah. calibrations. I would calibrate at the office. Coaching. Yeah. I would learn from like, when you get calibrated enough, you, you kind of learn how to like, mm-hmm. I can soothe myself in a way. And so I would do that at the office when there was negativity. I would do that at the office before I was on calls that I, you know, didn't feel great about going on. And I, I felt great about going on them <laughs> when I was on them and it really helped. Um, And my performance helped. And I started to get that confidence back. But then I worked on like, well, I'm going to shoot for these other jobs and I'm going to do something different. Right. And I remember going from this like lack of abundance, like, oh my God, there's no jobs. There's, and then just to going to like, there's a billion jobs and all I need is one. Right. There is a billion jobs and a billion opportunities and holy crap, all I need is one. And isn't that convenient? Cause I'm one person, you know what yeah. I mean? You know, you made me think of a story when my, yeah. um, my son was growing up and he's a teenager and my, my husband would give him advice about girls and, and he said, Oh, there's, there's no girls or whatever like that. But my husband would say, well, all you need is one, <laughs> right? There's a, there's always some, there, it's just so funny. That's so funny that you bring it up because in every situation, there's never just one, there's always something else. And if something doesn't work out, there is always something that comes back in its place. And it's usually always better than what drifted apart from you. Cause yeah. I think it's like drifting apart vibrationally, where if it didn't work out, oh, there was a reason. Um, you might not get that reason at the time. But then you're like, oh man, what came back is like way better. Um, 
but yeah, so like yeah. that just one, like all I need is just one. There's a billion. That's something that again is the abundance thing. Um, again, I'm getting so excited talking about it. So I feel like I'm all over the place, but just like, um, it's funny, like having this abundance mindset, learning it, seeing it in motion and then kind of losing it in the heat of this negative energy. Right. And it's like, it's so funny how then once that reawakens, you're like, oh man, that was always there. And so when I started to get calibrated, I saw instantaneous results because I always had that and I knew it to be true. And it was just like reawakened in me. Um, and then by the time August of 2019 rolled around, I was applying to a ton of jobs. I was getting a ton of interview requests and I actually was turning jobs down. So I had people like blowing me up about jobs. I interviewed for a role at the company that I'm at now, and I had multiple job offers and I ultimately, um, accepted this, the job, well, it's not the same job I have now. I've been promoted a few times, but it was like, that's the company I accepted. Uh, Let's just not skip right over that. I've been promoted a few times. So you got the job and you've been promoted a few times. Yeah, exactly. And it was always, and also it's really funny too, because like, I had multiple offers, but some, I remember one, I was like, there's something very off about this. And I was, I knew I had this gut feeling like when you do a really good interview and you nailed it, like, I'm going to tell you, like, I effing know, like I got that job. Okay. So I knew at where I interviewed when I walked out, I was like, I got, I'm getting an offer. There's no way. Like I'm get, I live in the universe where I'm getting an offer. Like I always mm-hmm. win. Right. And it's that also when you have that energy going into an interview as well, like that's like unstoppable energy. Right. And that's Mm -hmm. ageous and that's very exciting. Right. For everyone around you. So that's a that's a way to I mean, if you think about energy being contagious, think about that in an interview. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, whoa, it's powerful. But I have these like just this vibe about one of the jobs. It was like there's something about something about this. This is not for me. Somebody rubbed me the wrong way. I was like, man, I I couldn't work for that guy. Couldn't work for him. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't choose that job. And ironically, I know there have been a lot of like tech layoffs and stuff. If I had chosen that job, I would have been laid off. Yeah. Looking back. I love how much you, it seems to me anyway, from the beginning, you are very intuitive and trusting and like your little doggy, your dog is so cute. I see him on Facebook. Let's let's keep talking. I'm going to have him on my lap while we, while we talk, if that's okay. And now a word from our sponsor, who just happens to be, well, me. Just two really quick announcements. The first is that my video course, Love Your Body, Love Your Life, is free for a limited time. It normally sells for $97. The videos in this self-paced course take you through my five-step process found in my book, Delicious Alignment, which focuses on loving your body, loving your food and your life. The videos are designed to help you deepen your relationship with your inner being. When you nurture this relationship, when you make your alignment your number one priority, you begin to trust your body, maybe for the first time in your adult life. You begin to practice listening to your guidance about what to eat, when to eat, how to move your body and more. The link is in the show notes, or you can go to deliciousalignment.com slash free course. Also, I am now offering coaching and calibrations with the option for me to ask your inner being questions on your behalf at the end of the session. So the really cool part about this is you may submit the questions beforehand or I can ask the questions for you based on the calibration session itself. This is really an amazing and powerful experience. Find out more about coaching with me at deliciousalignment.com slash coaching. I currently have a few spots open for one-on-one clients. Alrighty then, let's get back to the interview. Can you show your, your dog? Oh, he's so cute. Oh my God. It's like a little teddy bear when I see him on Facebook and him or her. Him. What's his name? Peanut. Peanut. That's right. Oh my God. (laughs) He's going to keep us company while we chat. Yeah, totally. Totally. 
so it's a little teddy bear yes. um literally a teddy looks like that um what I was going to say is my observation of you, and this is the first time that we're talking, is that you seem to have always had this in intuitiveness and trust in that. So if something didn't feel good to you, you would absolutely you would be able to say no. Okay, this doesn't feel good anymore. Yes, it does feel good, but now it doesn't feel good anymore. The PhD program doesn't feel good anymore. Yeah. This is not where I want to be, right? And so you you listen, you listen, you listen, so you it is obviously something that we develop listening to our intuition more and more, but it seems like you always kind of had that where I don't I would, know if that's correct or not. I think so. I think that I, don't know, I was always super independent. I think like I had to be growing up. Um, and I would, yeah, I always like had to kind of not, like, I would say I was fairly independent as of like age 17. Like I wasn't like legally emancipated, but like on, I mean, I was kind of like <laughs> paying for my, like, I was not yeah. like one of those people where it's like, oh man, I'm on mom's health insurance. No, no. Like I, I was always very much like owning my own, mm. pump, if you will, mm -hmm. I felt very deeply responsible for it, but I find that exciting. And so I feel like when you're, I don't know, I feel like I was always just like, if it feels good, I'm going to do it. And like, right. we came here to have fun. Um, yeah, we came here to have fun. So if it's, if something feels off, there's actually a reason why it feels off. Yeah. If something feels physically mm -hmm. exhausting, there's a reason, right? And it's right. probably because it's not for you and you're forcing something that's not supposed to be for you. Yeah, um, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I'd like to ask you, it's sort of like going backwards a little bit in, in the narrative, but I'm curious how you went from growing up in a household that didn't have an abundance consciousness into going into the job as a cocktail waitress. And then you tapped into that abundance consciousness. It seems like that's what you're yeah. saying. And just, can you tell you a little bit more about how that happened? Because uh, a, yeah. lot of, a lot of people are struggling with an abundance consciousness. They know that that's the answer, but it's like, well, how do I get there? I'm you know, yeah. I'm 40 years old and I'm still, or I'm 50 or 60, you know, and I still have this. Um, yeah. And no, I love, love that. That's such a fun question. And, you know, I, oh, and this is actually bringing up some really fun memories that I think are like luck and a but not like luck, but just like, I feel like, like God universe, whatever I have to say, I'm like, yeah, well, God wants me to win. <laughs> so duh, you know, or like the universe <laughs> wants me to win. Um, but I always was like a daydreamer. I am, I'm still a daydreamer. I fantasize about everything. Like if I want something, I just fantasize about the idea of having it. And it's so fun that I'm like, my energy is focused on that. And that's very much law of attraction. But when I was growing up, I would fantasize about that. And things that really like that mm -hmm. lit my fire and like lit me up were like traveling. Um, I've always been really into heavy metal music. And so I met a lot of people when I was like, which is like super random, um, like in my early teens through that music scene. And I'm still really involved in that. And I always got to travel a lot from that. So like, I always, it's so funny. Like I always had like having no money. And I felt like we, I mean, we really had not a lot of money. There was always some way where something worked out. So if it was a trip, there was always like one scholarship spot. I got, got it. There was always one, like there was always somebody had extra free, frequent flyer miles. I got them. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask for them. They were offered. I was like, wouldn't yeah. it be nice if I could go to this event? Like I would get these. So I was going on trips. Like when I was like 17, I got to, like, I went to Germany myself on a, like to go to a heavy metal festival I wanted to go to. I had an internship in Northern Ireland when I was 17, because I wanted to be an historian. And I happened to know someone whose mom was an historian and she was like, Oh, I like you. You can work for me and I'll get you the flights and you could stay in Northern Ireland for a month. Right. So these are like things that like, you don't, you associate with having money on hand. I had like no money on hand, but I felt like, well, wow, these are really rich experiences and having these experiences is so fun. And I'm used to this like because yeah. I, I am used to it. And then when I was 18, I was like working in that, you know, I was going to school, commuting to school, working um, in the New York City area, right? So there was a lot going on. 
I always had money coming in. And so it was just super fun. And then you're like, I was always going to like music events, meeting people, going on trips related to that. And on paper, like if you looked at that W2, didn't have a lot of money, but I felt so damn rich. It was so fun. And I actually yeah. was talking to friends about that. I'm like, I make like a, way more money than I did at that time. But like, I want to feel that rich feeling again that I had at that time. And I was like, wow, I, I want to vibe on this rich feeling. You know, I love this. It's like basking, right? Vibe on it and uh, rampage yeah. on it. And as you're talking, and I, I just want to invite anybody who listens to this podcast to just think of times in your life when when that was happening for you. And you just made me remember, oh my God, that trip that a friend of mine took me on to four different countries. Yes, uh, yes. I stayed in the most beautiful hotels. I meet, I met royalty in Kuwait and Dubai yes. and treated us like kings and queens. And then, uh, you know, I lived in a, my my parents condo for three years, pretty much rent free. I mean, when you, if you really look and, and look at how abundance comes to you and it doesn't have to be a certain way, it can come yeah, to you exactly. in, a, in gifts and just, um, things that happen. Yeah. You, you just made me remember all of oh I love it. I'm like, and, oh, and, now I'm, and now I'm thinking about these things too. It's super fun because it's like, when you think about a good thought, just like when you think about a bad thought, right? Like you can roll down that friggin' hill with that bad thought, or you can just be like cruising and everything with that good <laughs> thought. And it's so easy to choose either. Right. And it's like, well, now, well, so I'll tell you, Rana, I'm going to choose to feel rich today. Um, that's like my vibe for the whole day. Now I feel really friggin' rich, but hmm. that's really fun to think about just this feeling of being rich and having like more than enough because more is always coming. Um, and so my experience as a kid, even though there was not a lot of money was there's always a way for money to be coming. And there's always all of these experiences that I have. And that's super exciting. And, you know, I just like, and I was like, I can't wait to experience this. That wouldn't that be nice to try mm -hmm. this. And even like when I go on trips now, um, I was in Greece. I went, there was a lot of the, the law of attraction people went on that Greece trip. I was in Greece and I would play these uh, abundance games with myself. And it sounds really weird, but, but I would say, you know, it's like, well, I'm going to walk like a mile from the hotel to the beach. I'm only going to take 10 euros today. I'm going to be by myself all day and I'm not going to take a card. I'm not going to take anything else. I'm going to have 10 euros and I'm going to see what happens. And I'm going to spend the whole day and see what happens. And I'm open to paying for nothing. I'm open to the, and so like things would happen. And like, I would just be like, well, I'm eating lunch. And I'd be like, all right, well, I can afford this with my 10 euros, you know? And then like somebody would be like, I'm buying her lunch. Or someone would be like, hey, I have an extra one of these. Do you want one? Or I'd run into someone I knew from that group or just something. And it wasn't like, you know, Hey, I, I didn't tell anyone. I only had 10 euros. It was people just like doing that. And so I started to escalate and I was like, well, today I'm only going to carry five euros. <laughs> today I'm going to carry nothing. I'm going to have no cash. I'm going to have some seashells or something. And like, it was so funny. And then people kept bringing me like gifts. Like I remember and, like, the seashells come out. Cause I had this day where I was, I had no money on me. And somehow like somebody was like, Oh, come to this place. Like have a glass of wine here. I'm like, have my little wine on vacation. That is, I'm not paying for it. Right. It's given. And then somebody like, well, I'm enjoying that wine while I have no money in my pocket is like, oh, have you ever been to Greece before? I mean, like we get it. I don't look Greek, right? I'd probably stand out. So like, have you been here before? I'm like, no, well, have you, you, you got to try this dessert. And so they're giving me like desserts to try. And I'm like, this is so funny. How sweet is this? Right. Literally how sweet mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. is. And then after I go on a walk and this, this guy is like on a, a boat and he's like, I got these shells. Do you want these shells? They're actually in my apartment right now. There's these massive conch shells. And I remember coming back and like, I think Gina and Liz Hayes, who was also really awesome, were sitting at the resort and they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, I got these shells. <laughs> and I was like, guys, get a little bit of my like no money game. And they're like, that's so fun. Yeah. I know you're really big on these games and I love it. So fun. And the games are fun. So it's like, I'm not worried. You know what I mean? And uh -huh. it's, just like, it, it's just like, I actually looking back and I haven't made this link until we have this, we're having this conversation. I associate that game, I think with that feeling of being a child, that inner child feeling of like, well, 
there's always something coming. So I feel rich, right? It's kind of fun. And so yeah. I haven't played it in a while and I'm excited to kind of play it again. I don't know. It's, it's just really fun to play it. Cause it's like, for some people that's really scary. And for me, it's actually yeah. really exciting. And then also to that doubt, it's like, it's contagious. It's like, it's like fear. It's like blood in the water. If you're a shark, right? Like fear is something like that you can sense. Like I interview people a lot and you can always tell when someone is really, really nervous or um, you can tell in person when someone is really, right. It's like, that's, that rubs off. Right. So like the confidence is like, well, it's like also too, if you're, if there's a lack of confidence, it's like, well, she, is she doubting this? Should I doubt it too? Yeah. And, and it's, I mean, it's energy. You can feel it. You know? Exactly. And then it's like, wait a minute, she's all in. I want to be all in too, right? It's, it's really different. Yeah. yeah. It's all, it's all about energetics and that. Um, so how do you go? And I asked Amy the same thing. How do you go from the split energy of doubt to belief? That's yeah, that's really important. I think that, um, that's challenging, but I think that for me and like, there, I mean, again, like you don't win everything, right? Like, I don't think we need to win everything because if you, like there's stuff that I think I lost, right. But that prepared me to win even bigger where if I had won that thing, I would have been satisfied, but I would like, if I don't win something, like if something falls through, like if a deal falls through or if some other thing falls through, my mindset is not like, well, that's it. It's over. I'm like, oh, game on. There's more. This is so fun. Let's find some more. More is coming, you know? Um, like I actually like picture, um, I picture this like arrow, red arrow above my head, but it's like in the sky, which sounds nuts. But like if I'm being calibrated or if I'm like calibrating myself, or if I'm even like laying on the couch, like meditating, I visualize this arrow over me. And it's like everything here, like receiving mode, like send mm. to Alexa, deliver to Alexa, Alexa <laughs> accepting deliveries. And I'm like, all right, I'm just going to lay back and, and wait till something amazing comes around. Um, and it's not for lack of like action. Right. But it's a little like, you know, are you willing to like accept that, like that there's more coming. And so, um, I, th so to your point about, like, I think that, what is it that like, would you say the fear of something or just like, yeah, having, like the, like, the, the, if the doubt will kill it, you know, yeah. that if you don't believe in yourself and what you're selling or what services you're providing, yeah. then that's the split energy. People will feel that even if the, yeah, they I just feel it. If, yeah. I think that if you don't believe in what you're selling, maybe you should be selling something else. If you don't believe in what you're doing, maybe you should be doing something else that might not be for you. And that's also a challenging conversation to have with yourself or with other people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But, but maybe it's, um, I don't know. Cause I work for, with some people that feel, you know, they're in sales and that, and it's just like, Oh, well, nothing's happening or, um, that confidence in yourself, that confidence in yeah. myself to you know, like someone's an in insurance, you know, that confidence to know that, you know, Oh, I can do this. I, think, I can yeah. build this business. I think that what's super critical there is having a win or a, a good anchor point to go back to, because what is like temporary, like the ephemera, if you will, like the junk, is like maybe the current situation, which is like maybe sales aren't good, numbers aren't great, right? But the larger picture is that, of course, it's great. I'm right on track. I am like literally born to win or whatever you say that feel like for me, it's always like the universe wants me to win. God wants me to win. That's yeah, like, something I I like that. It's like, do you yeah. believe that? And if, do you have a, a point in time that you can anchor back to? And it might be like that time I nailed something. I was like, well, of course I can win. Cause I have this history of winning, like write down your wins. Like I even like, will say like certain things I'll save. Like if, if I get like a good email or something or something, like I'll save it. If something makes me feel good, I keep like a feel good file or like, like a list of wins that have happened in the past to think back to if I'm not. That's feeling great. Confident. That's great. So like anchoring yeah. back to, yeah, something, yeah. a memory of when you had a win and just yeah. feeling that. Yeah. yeah. And then another thing 
is like that I have people do on my team and that I always did, which always helped me be a top performer. It was like, am I open to the possibility of everything going in my favor? Mm. And like, are, I will ask people that when they do like, wow. when they stand up to, like <laughs> yeah. And I ask team, my team that like, if we're going deal by deal, I'm like, are you open to the possibility that everything can work out in your favor? Because that changes your mindset. And when you're open to the possibility of everything working out for you, which is like, that's a philosophical thing, okay? Like that's fucking philosophical. Sorry, I swore. (laughs) Are you open to everything working out for you? Mm. Are you open to winning, right? And I just love that question. Are you open to it? Because if you're open to winning, if you are open to everything working out in your favor, you will find a way, a way will find you something that like when you're, when you're focused on this, there's all these things out here that could be a solution that you haven't thought of yet. And it could be talking to someone, getting a different perspective. It could be like a new angle. It could be like, I don't know, like just something. And I, I always like, I love like creative solutions. Like that's one of my favorite things in like deal, like deal structuring in sales is like, that's so fun. Like doing like weird, weird stuff. I love it. Um, <laughs> to make it work, but it's like, are you open to everything working out for you? And if you're struggling, I think it's important to say like, am I actually open to everything working mm. out for me? And what a great not, question. You have to ask yourself, cause there's times where I'm like, wait a minute, am I limiting myself based on what I think is possible? Yeah. Wait, yeah. It's like, wait a minute, you know? So you have to ask yourself that. Like you yeah. have to ask yourself that. Well, let me ask you about um, visualization. It sounds to me like you, you really are into that, which I'm yeah. really into. I, I'm it. into yeah. visualization, like either writing in my journal and pre-paving it as if it's already happened or doing an exercise with my, um, my group where we all like pretend that this thing has already happened. And what are some ways, additional ways that you use visualization, the games, the, mm, yeah, I, the arrow. I, I, <laughs> I love those games. I love an arrow. I love also too, like when I meditate, which I think is really important. I will, um, again, this is very Abraham Hicks. So like, these are terms that are very Abraham Hicks ask, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. that comes straight from Abraham, like the vortex. Like I actually will be like, Oh, I want to just like play in the vortex. So I'll like lay back on the couch and just like imagine myself in, in the vortex. And there's like, for me, it's like this big greenhouse in a way it's super weird, but like, there's just certain places we've all been that are like, man, this is kind of like a fun playground to be in. And I'm like, well, everything's kind of working out. Everything I want is here. Every, the the grid is filling out. It looks really good. I don't know what's going to happen next. I'm really cool with that. Like, isn't this exciting to play around here? And so that's one thing that I do. I've also done that. There's a really fun Abraham game where you write a check to yourself and then Mm -hmm. you spend it the next day and the next day the amount doubles. And so eventually, like by the time you get to a certain level of money, because when you double the money, if you start with a thousand dollars, that, that crap doubles. By the time you hit a month, you're like, you're in the millions. Okay. So it's it's, then you have more money that you even know to do with. And then it's like, oh my gosh, I haven't played that in a while, but it's super fun. Yes. Um, and then, so like one thing I'll even do like at work too, is like, um, be like, guys, like make your, like, do, like this sounds cheesy because of like remote stuff, but like, uh, I'll be like, make your zoom background, something that you would spend $5 million on. Ooh. And then people are like, oh, well, how would I spend $5 million? Wow. I, there's a lot of stuff I want, but like how, and then you think about how you would spend the money. And if you're thinking about how you would spend the money, you're open to receiving the money, right? So that's something that I like to play around with too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, just thinking about like, wouldn't it be nice? That's also another game. Like, wouldn't it be nice if this happened? Like, wouldn't it be nice if this was free? Wouldn't it be nice if we got an upgrade? Wouldn't it be nice if the perfect mm-hmm. health spot appeared? Wouldn't it be nice if, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. Wouldn't it be nice if it was yeah. suddenly available? Wouldn't yes. it be nice if it all worked out? Wouldn't it be nice if I didn't have to do anything? Um, wouldn't it be nice if the situation resolved itself on its own? Mm. Really fun. And then it happens. And so that's fun with money too. Like when we were like that, that Greece trip was super fun, right? Cause we were playing those games where I'm like, wouldn't it be nice if lunch was free? Wouldn't it be nice if like, 
I found money. Wouldn't it be like, and then you just keep escalating and then it's some of it's silly, but then you're in that mode where like anything is possible Mm -hmm. and it works because lunch was free that day. (laughs) (laughs) Just being appreciative for the little things and the big things. Yes. 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 And there's, there's always more coming too. It's like, this is so nice. Yeah. Um, And I think when you, your point about appreciation is really important because even if you're, if you're dissatisfied or let's say you want more, it's important to, to be appreciative of the present and what is presently occurring. Yes. Because if you're focused on the negative, it's very easy to attract more negative experiences Mm -hmm. and situations. So maybe there is not enough right now. Wouldn't it be nice? You could say like the, wouldn't it be nice, but man, I really appreciate there's $5 in my wallet. I feel really good having money. This couch feels really good. I'm so glad I had money to spend on this couch or wow. Like I am drinking X, Y, Z. Like, man, I really appreciate my diet root beer, which I paid $9 for a case of. It's so nice to have $9 to spend. Like I, that sounds like silly examples. No. Like, when you say that, it's like, or even let's say you want a new car. You're not going to be, be like, man, my car sucks. I really want a new car. That's really negative, right? I really appreciate my new, my current car. It has served me so well. I am really ready and totally open to an even nicer car coming my way. Like it's like those sorts of things. And so let's say you're in a role. It could be like, maybe you're not an entrepreneur. Maybe it's like a sales role or like even a job that you don't like. Right. Mm -hmm. I so appreciate this job right now. And that money is coming in. It feels really good, but I'm so open or not even, but while this is, I am so open to what is next. And I'm really excited where I am now. And I really appreciate that. Um, and I'm just, you know, I'm looking forward to it. Like I anticipate. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, that's really important. Yeah. Cause I'm thinking of all the times, you know, I, I've heard Abraham talk about if you're, you're in a unhappy relationship, you want to leave. And if you keep focusing on the negativity, negative things about the relationship, you know, you probably just create the same thing. So it's just like, get, leave in a good place, leave in a, you know, start appreciating that person and leave like, you know, just well, thank have you it. For, thank yeah. you for showing me your true colors because now I know yeah. what I like, or mm-hmm. like, that's, a, that's something that I think is fun too. It's like, thank you for maybe like, if you think about like a work, thing like let's say like a sales thing too because I know we were talking about sales like thank you for saying no to this because I just learned something new about how I'm gonna move on going forward or Mm -hmm. thank you for like I appreciate this learning that I got from this because now I have new stuff to put into practice um but yeah I like that example about the relationship too because it that's one where like people talk about patterns a lot And that's like a really easy one to visualize that people relate to, but it's the same for every situation. So instead, what if, like you said, like, I so appreciate what you've shown me. And also I appreciate the contrast, right? I appreciate learning about myself and what I want, not even what I don't want, but what I actually want. And isn't that nice? Yeah. And it's just like, everything is working in your favor. And again, it comes yeah. to like, are you open to the possibility of everything working in your favor? Mm, I'm going to, I love that one. And then like, and you'll find that like, when you dig into it, a lot of people aren't. And then that's like a reframing. It's like, well, like, what if you chose in this moment? And it's not like a punitive thing. Cause it's like, it's really, that can be really hard. Cause like, that's not, if you consume like all the media and you consume like negative content and I don't consume negative content, right? It's really easy to be like, man, everything sucks, right? So I don't begrudge anyone for not being open to that. But it's like, what if in this moment you suspended disbelief and you could and you believe that just for this situation, everything could work in your favor? What might that look like? And then you visualize like, oh, there's stuff I don't even know, but it's going to work out. So Mm -hmm. yeah. Really great. Well, Alexa, I really appreciate you meeting with me today and talking about money and abundance. Thank you for letting me share. It's been fun to chat. I hope you enjoyed this interview with Alexa O'Hara. You can find her on Instagram at underscore badassblonde or at name three songs. 
Here's a summary of five questions to ask yourself that will transform your relationship to money. One, am I limiting myself to what I think is possible? Two, am I open to the possibility of everything going in my favor? Three, am I willing to accept that there is more coming? Four, am I willing to accept that the universe, God, wants me to win? And five, how can I reframe this so that it feels a little better or so that it feels really, really good? I love these questions. It changes everything when you ask them, doesn't it? Here are some additional takeaways from this interview. One, if you choose to focus on lack, things will be challenging. If you choose to view things as being abundant, money will literally come through the door every day. Two, when you're open to everything working out in your favor, you will find a way or a way will find you. Three, when you make room for more to come, more is always coming. Four, when you start getting calibrated by a practitioner or calibrating yourself, your vibration and outlook changes. Five, when you're vibing high, people want to buy from you and people want to hire you. The energy is contagious. Six, abundance isn't only about money in the bank. It's about all the ways abundance is expressed around you and in your life. Think of a point in time where you felt abundant and access that emotion. Seven, visualization technique number one, lie back and pretend you are in the vortex, whatever that looks like to you. Eight, visualization technique number two, make your Zoom background something really luxurious that pleases you. Nine, it's about reawakening the truth that's already within you. And 10, it all comes down to you and your energy. Really, really good stuff. If you enjoyed this interview, I would love it if you would be so kind as to share delicious alignment, high vibing conversations with Rhonda Ryder with a friend or two. So grab the link, text a few friends. Better yet, if you really got a lot of value out of this show, post about it on social with the link and let's share this resource with people interested in raising their vibes even higher. I know there are many resources out there, so I really appreciate you spending this time with me. Alrighty then, my friends. Thanks so much for tuning in. I cannot wait to see you next Thursday when I'll share my amazing interview with Gina Mallison, the Queen of Calibration.